Afternoon guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I wanted to shoot one last video real quick for you before I go to the Fur Takers of America Trappers College for a week. I'm leaving tomorrow and I'll be gone till the following weekend, so no videos will be get posted on my channel, most likely for the next seven days, eight days. Before I do that, I wanted to leave you with a video, and if I get through this one without laughing too hard at myself, we'll be okay. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere on a dirt gravel road, and I'm turd hunting. And the reason I'm turd hunting is because I want to make a BLT. And we'll talk about that more in just a few minutes. Okay, so here's my bag of turds that I've picked up so far out here. And hunting turds is very much like hunting treasure if you are a trapper that's trying to trap canine. Because a BLT means bait, lure, and turd. And I was taught that at the Fur Takers of America College last year by Doug McKenzie and Kim Hunt. And what that means is you want to, any set that you're going to make for canine, you really want to put some type of bait in that set, some type of a lure or long range attractant in that set, and then a turd, both for visual attractant as well as scent. We all know that dogs are sniffers. They like smelling each other's stuff. And if you put someone else's stuff somewhere, another coyote or another canine is going to come and investigate that and wonder why he left his stuff there. And he's liable to start digging around sniffing at your scent and your lure and your bait that you've got in the hole and step into your trap. So the BLT stands for bait, lure, and turd. And the turd is a key element. So turd hunting can give you a lot of good stuff. Number one, it gives you a lot of information. I classify my turds three ways. Steamies, freshies, and dusties. A steamy means it just came out of the animal. It's still hot, it's still steaming. Those are the hardest ones to find. And those are the gold. So since we're treasure hunting, we're going to equate this to monetary value as far as gold, silver, and copper. A steamy is gold. A freshy means it's only a couple of days old. It's still pliable. It's still very dark in color. And those are very good for your sets as well on a BLT. A dusty is pretty much what I have in this bag. Those are the least desirable. Those are the copper. If I'm treasure hunting, these are the copper. The steamies are the gold. But the copper can still be used because I'm going to spray that scent down with some type of urine anyway. And it will somewhat freshen up a dusty. But this is the least desirable. So what I'm really looking for out here is the freshies. If I found a steamy, that would be great. But the freshies are going to tell me that there's coyote or some type of canine in the area. And that's going to be an indicator for me that that's a good area to trap. So not only is it giving me something for my set, it's also telling me where to trap. It will also tell me what that animal's feeding on if I look through that scat. Coyotes don't feed on the things that a lot of people believe they do all year long. They are scavengers, they are meat eaters, but in the summer, spring, and early fall, they tend to feed on other things like nuts, berries, fruits, things like that that are going to be in their scat. And if you look at their scat, if there's hair and fur in there, then you know they're eating meat. If there's a lot of fruit, nuts, and seeds, and things like that in there, then you know that they're not eating meat as much yet. So putting your set together and having some type of meat in there for bait may not be the best thing for that animal in that season if you're trapping to trap those coyotes out of an area. But in the wintertime, for the most part, if you're trapping wintertime, they're going to be eating meat by then because all of the other things are going to be scarce. So most of the time, a meat set's going to be good in the wintertime. So let's get back to our turd hunt and see if we can find some freshies or some steamies. Okay, guys, here's a freshie. This is not a dusty, this is not a steamy, this is a freshy. It's not old enough yet to have turned white. It's probably still going to be a little bit pliable, and it's going to be perfect for a trap set. Now I'm going to collect this freshy and put it in my put it in my bag here with another piece of plastic so I'm not contaminating my hands at all. And to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't worry too much about that if it wasn't on camera, but for the people out there who would say, ooh, you just touched that poop, I'm going to do it that way. Okay, well here's a Dusty. And you can see that it's kind of turning white and getting powdery looking. Well, that's the next one we're going to pick up. I pick them all up no matter what. I'll use a Dusty if I have to, but I'd rather have a Freshie. I missed a piece. 
Got to get it off. Like money, picking up money. Okay, folks, well, we've been driving around for probably a half an hour, 45 minutes, and we got a about a half of a quart Ziploc bag here of mixture of a couple freshies and a couple of dusties in here. We didn't find any steamies today, so no gold on this treasure hunt. But these will all be used over the next week to hopefully trap canines at the Fur Takers of America Trappers College. I wanted to leave you guys with a little bit of a comic relief video, I guess that you want to call it, but also a good learning tool. And understanding scat and what it will tell you is just another skill that the woodsman needs, especially if he's going to trap his game. You can tell not only what animals are in the area, but what those animals are feeding on and where their travel routes are. And all three of those things are very important to trapping. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this quick video today. I'll be back with another video as soon as I get back from the Fur Takers of America in about seven or eight days. In the meantime, please go out to my main page on my YouTube channel, my home page, and on the right-hand column, there are links to every one of my instructor's YouTube channels. They all have videos, they all have knowledge worth learning, and they all have lots and lots of good things to share with you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my instructors and family. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.